What's up, guys? We're uh, getting into it. Game one, St. Xavier versus Valpo. Um, Valpo on the Captain Falcon here. Um, so, how do you feel about this matchup? Uh, Captain Falcon versus Robin? I'd say Robin. Um, I'd say that Captain Falcon can like really get up and approach. I think if he like tries to avoid the projectiles and um, make sure that he doesn't keep his distance from Robin, I think there's a good chance that we can get through this pretty yeah, I think in this matchup, Captain Falcon really wants to, like, get in and stay in, so Robin can't, like, utilize that, like, projectile game with her magic. Um, and then can you tell me a little bit about that bar at the bottom that Robin uses, because I'm not super familiar with the character. Okay, so that is the, uh, that is Robin's magic, and also the, the sword that she uses. So, the different tomes are the different types of magic that she can use. Uh, whenever it's red, I believe that's arc fire. That's when she shoots out like a flame, and it decreases with time for each use. Oh, nice Ooh. spike! So, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Little hype moment. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. So, uh, Robin has a limited amount of uses for the magic and the tome, and the more that she uses them, uh, the more that the bar decreases to the point where. Uh, she can't use them anymore if she runs out, in which case, I believe Robin switches to a different sword. Ooh, an SD from Robin. But yeah, of course it regenerates every time she respawns, and I think with time as well. Well, thanks for that info. Um, Robin's yeah. a character I don't think we've seen yet on stream, so I'm sure the viewers appreciate that too. Um, but you know, we started off pretty even, both players getting up to about 80%. Chris with a huge spike, and then the Robin unfortunately sd on her uh, second stock. Um, so Chris at like one, ooh, at 160, able to finish it out. So two stocks to one here. Chris doing a great job settling into neutral, um, really keeping this great advantage state. Catch the roll with the side B. A lot of up airs. See if he's able to get a knee. Ooh, not able to get a conversion off the down air, but gets a lot of great percent. She has a projectile? So. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was, uh, I think she ran out of the um, the sword or some magic. Oh, God. Too. So, yeah, when that happens, they just throw it away like a projectile. Just like right there. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, doesn't quite get the uh, air dodge read. Really important stock here for the crew battle. Um, and then also, as we've mentioned, game one super important in these crew battles because um, once you get that advantage, you kind of get ahead in the series, so you get the momentum, um, character counter pick, and stage counter pick um, going through the series. So really important. Chris going for a big roll read, not able to get it. Um, Chris really looking to uh, hold on to this stock, and I believe Robin has a tough tough time getting those kill confirms. Um, well, Captain Falcon can kill really early and does get it with the up B. So, great job by Chris. Um, Valpo up two stocks, eight to six. So, how do you feel about that match? I feel like it went really well for Chris. Uh, he was able to keep his distance still, avoid like the projectiles, and then find a way to get in. Yeah. Um, going into it, it like seemed pretty even at the beginning, but Chris really like settled in and played really well. Um, yeah, for sure. Towards like back half of that game, um, and since this is a crew battle, winning with two stocks is really important too, as he'll retain those um, both of them uh, going into the next match. So Saint Xavier is new to the Great Lakes Esports Conference this year, and I do not believe we've ever played them in the NECC. So this is our first time competing against them in Smash Bros. So we're not super familiar with the characters they play. I've heard murmurs that they might have a King K rule, which would be great because we have two of them. So if we lose to a King K rule, I'm going to be very upset with our Smash team. Oh, I'd be ready for the ditto. Yeah, <laughs> that would be hype if we had a oh, King yeah. K rule ditto. So, yeah, hopefully if uh, King K rule goes in next, you or Josh will uh, get an opportunity to play. But I'd definitely be down um, for that. Definitely Alex and Chris also too. have great experience in the matchup too. Oh, yeah. And anyone in this facility has played against a lot of King K rule. So, 
Yeah, but uh, St. Xavier is deciding who they're going to put in next, um, and they're also going through stage bans, uh, what stage they feel good playing against Captain Falcon on. So. <clears throat> So yeah, Valpo five and two on the season so far. Um, Smash Team has put themselves in a really good spot um, for playoff qualification. I believe we'll need to win at least one of our next two games um, to be sure and make me feel comfortable. Probably both would be ideal. Yeah. <laughs> um, additionally, for seeding too. Yeah, I think we can pull it off, especially with our performance going like into the start of this. It's yeah. a little early to tell, but I think. With the performance so far, we really got a good chance at winning today. Yeah, we are coming off back-to-back -back losses. Um, so we started the season really strong, 5-0. and um, And then we played two tough teams. So we played Bethel in person and lost. And then Manchester, who is a very strong team. Probably the conference favorite. Uh, absolutely the conference favorite um, so far this year. And um, it's going to be nice to see if we can kind of get back on our feet today. And... Um, kind of get a win after <laughs> losing to would be nice so yeah third time's the charm yeah i don't think we're in like a negative mood at all um they were games that we felt like we played decent in and you know we just played strong opponents um but this one today i feel like is a must win um just based off of their performance and ours throughout the season i think we're definitely um in a good spot to win today and so far a good start in game one and it looks like we're going to have a Zelda. So getting into some more game one action. Chris with uh, two stocks left. Valpo with the overall total stock lead of eight to six. So any insight on this matchup? So I feel like Chris might have a little bit of experience with Zelda, seeing as our, um, Alex can sometimes be playing uh, Zelda from like time to time. So I feel like he might have some idea of what to do here. Uh, as for a general matchup, uh, definitely uh, Captain Falcon has to pray for his strengths, uh, get up close and whatnot, avoiding the projectiles from Zelda. Uh, try not to get caught by that right there, the uh, neighbor's love. Yeah, Zelda is definitely a lot like more familiar character, at least for me, um, as we have a lot more mains here online a lot more. Um, I, don't, I think we've played against one Zelda so far in the Gleck, or maybe it was the... Uh, Academy team in the NECC as well. Um, but yeah, good start here for sure. Definitely looks like he knows what he's doing. A lot of uh, big read attempts at the down smash looking for a roll. Looks like the Zelda really likes the uh, the phantom move. Yeah. Ooh, not able to get a punish on that uh, recovery. <laughs> Just doing a good job of kind of finding those moments and staying in the advantage. It's definitely putting a lot of pressure on the Zelda. I didn't know you could reverse the uh, down B sword guy from Zelda. <laughs> I feel like I learned something new every single time I watch. Hey, you love to see that. Ooh. Lots of heavy hidden moves being traded yeah. here. Zelda on top of there. And he just trades That's right back. Smash. Yeah, he's been going for some of these punishes with smash attacks rather than going for settling for like an up B on that one or maybe an easier punish that can maybe convert into something. Um, just because Zelda is like the amount of frames in between there is usually not going to be enough for one of those smash attacks. Yeah, strong but slow moves. Ooh, catch the spot dodge. We saw him go for that earlier in the match and Zelda hold the shield. This time gets the spot dodge. Did a pretty good job navigating around neutral. Down B doesn't work this time. It's been working a lot this game. Captain Falcon definitely has to keep at least a little bit of a distance. Uh, so you have like the disjoints from the arms and legs. So, so that he doesn't get hit by... Um, Zelda's neutral oh. special. Doesn't get a punish in there. It's a Zelda off stage.
You know, and that sword guy from Zelda covers both the um, platform and the ground, so forces uh, Chris to use his double jump a lot of the time. Nice up B by the Zelda, able to get uh, both hits. And the up yep, smash, smash will kill. Anything. Really big, able to take another stock um, with his last one here. So. Doesn't uh, end up getting any percent on the Zelda on the last stock, but it doesn't matter because he already got the stock. So, yep. Falpo with a pretty good lead, um, six to four here so far. So we have a two stock lead. Great job by Chris taking five. Um, anytime you take more than three, you have absolutely done your job. Um, sure. I thought it was really big that he was able to get that second one too in this game. Um, yeah. So. Great job, and then now we also have the advantage of watching the Zelda play, and then also deciding what character do we want against this Zelda, what stage do we want against this Zelda. Um, so what, what, and what, in your opinion, do you think is the best matchup uh, against Zelda that we have? So I think, um, from a stage basis, I think we want to uh, pick stages that are not too long, uh, stages that uh, are more up close, so that characters yeah. like oh. Got a King K we get one, going in. one of our King K rules. The other King K rule man on the team. <laughs> yeah, so um, St. Xavier will get three stage bans. Then out of that, we get the rest of the lists, which I think is like four or five stages after the ban first three bans. Um, yeah. It looks like we'll be going to... Oh, God, they're not picking yet. <laughs> Yeah, but I think that small stage, I think you're right about that. Um, and then how does King K rule, how does that interact with Zelda's neutral B? Does it reflect back the crown and the cannon? Yeah, everything that um, he can throw at Zelda will be reflected back. Okay. Which, the Zelda does have to be careful with though, because King K rule can also reflect it back as yeah. well. Which can, I'm not sure if it can instantly kill, but it can definitely do a lot of damage. Definitely do like 80%. Um, so I know I've reflected a couple of things back at... Uh, Josh before and he just immediately counters and it does like 80% to me um, but he'll have time to throw out that counter and hopefully Zelda doesn't neutral be again because then it's moving so fast that you can't counter again Yeah. so you'll probably end up with a broken shield or die at 0% <laughs> so I hope we get to see that right out of the gate yeah that'd be really exciting it looks like Josh is going for a different skin here today pink skin ooh Oh, or I guess if it can go right back on the cannon, too. Yeah, that is true, too. So, great start by Josh. Already 63%. Seems like he's only hit him a couple times, but just already a massive lead. I think King K. Rule has a much better moveset to deal with Zelda's neutral, too. Um, can actually, like, contest some of these things. Um... That nair off ledge is so hard to like recover from and get back to neutral. Zelda able to do it this time. Oh yeah, you gotta be careful with the neutral yeah. being the crown. Yeah, I think he got the armor uh, while he was still throwing the crown out that time. Yeah, luckily he was able to get the crown back quickly. At this point, I feel like it's more of a risk <laughs> than uh, anything. But we'll see him go for this two frame again. Not able to get it. The nair. <laughs> I struggle really with that nair here. so much. Ooh, the sword able to help him recover this time. Yeah, I love using the Nair. Oh! And Josh just cleans it up. <laughs> I hear Josh laughing in the background. <laughs> so he seems happy and having a good time. I would be um, happy too. Yeah, so the dash attack, clanking with the... Uh, I don't know if clank's the correct term, but going through yeah. um, the sword guy. Don't know what it's called. Zelda's down B. I think and, it's the um, Phantom. Phantom? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, able to kill him first stock. So did a really good job. Um, yeah, kept all three stocks. Losing one. Yeah. So Falpo now with a three stock advantage. Um, so I'm really curious to see who uh, says Xavier puts it next. So we have the Robin and the Zelda is kind of two characters that I don't think we we're expecting. But now we know going into game two and if necessary, game three. Um, what character roster they have so good information to know I wonder if they're gonna go for the K rule ditto. I really hope I really hope it's a King K rule That'd be great to see um, The other thing to note is we've talked about all the experience that we have against King K rule Theoretically, they should also have the King K rule experience um, 
since they play one, so. That's true, although we did just take two stocks from them without losing one, so. Yeah. Um, but we have two t King K rules. So, we got double the advantage here. Yeah, so if you're practicing, you have a pretty high likely chance of playing a King K rule at some point during your practice every single day. So, and currently have the Zelda hovered, so unsure if they have uh, just haven't switched yet or it's the same person. I'm going to guess that it they just haven't switched yet, but I guess yeah. we'll see. That's most likely the case. Unless yep. there's another Zelda with the same skin. Okay, yeah, they're changing character. I would highly doubt that. I mean, we have two King K rules, which seems really weird. So, I guess it wouldn't be too far-fetched. That is um, true. I don't know many teams with, like, two of the same character that, like, both play in their rotation of three, like, consistently, though. <gasps> oh. Yes. I don't know if you can hear, but there's some cheers back uh, in the background of the facility as uh, the people are getting what they want. So, we have the King K rule ditto. Should be an exciting match. So Valpo with the um, pink King K roll here, and Saint Xavier with the blue King K roll, and it will be a straight up three stock versus three stock fight. So really excited to watch this one. Um, since you're on the broadcast and you play King K roll, tell me a little bit about. <laughs> I'm gonna let you. I, I was gonna say tell me a little bit about this matchup, but I mean obviously it's even. Um, yeah, so with this matchup, what's actually interesting is how, like, just like within the Zelda match, how he's seen um, Josh sent out the cannonball, and Zelda reflected it, and he just picked it back into his cannonball, or into his blunderbuss, excuse me. That can definitely happen here, too. Good shield. As you're talking about it, it happens. Yeah, that with the uh, reflect from K. Rule. So St. Xavier here at 162%, with the rage able to get a dash attack on Josh. Um... Not getting like a perfect on the ledge or anything. Because we've seen a lot of uh, counters come out so far for St. Xavier. As he now has King K. Rule's crown. That, yeah. No. Oh. Ooh! Great DI by St. Xavier. I thought he was 100% dead. Oh, that'll do. He it. goes for the ledge trap. So, something interesting about this match that I know is in this matchup, it's the only one that King K. Rule can pick up his own crown. Or not his own crown, but a King K. Rule crown. Um, as we see St. Xavier going for that exact same ledge trap that um, you and Josh utilize uh, a decent amount. And also going for that down smash right at the edge of the stage, too. Yeah, us K. Rule mains love our down smashes. <laughs> Good job getting him off stage. Let's see if we can get a... So does K. Rule down air beat his up B? Because I know his up B beats out a lot of things. So it's actually a little bit tough to hit, but once you get a lot of practice in, especially with K 2K rules on the team, uh, it, it's definitely much easier to get used to. And now it's actually being more practical because we have other K rules to fight. Ooh. There. Got to update our stocks. We are 4 to 2 right now. Ooh, he answers back with a down. 4 to 1 right now. <laughs> So Last Valpo stock, in even. a really good spot to uh, win game one of this crew battle, but more importantly, um, we are even in this three stock versus three stock King K rule uh, ditto, which in my opinion is just as big as the match. Who can win this ditto? That's going to hurt. Who is the b best King K rule in the conference? Oh, gets a counter that time. Yeah, lots of counters getting hit here. Josh has to be careful with using the blunderbuss. I feel like Saint Xavier has definitely utilized that counter a lot better than Josh. We'll see a down throw. And able to get it with the up tilt. That finishes it. So great job by Valpo taking game one. Um, winning the King K rule ditto. So what are your thoughts about game one? Uh, I believe that Josh was really able to bring it back towards the end. I know there was a lot of flaws with uh, using the blunderbuss, as it was often reflected many times. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he was able to adapt to that very well, but he did stop using it towards the end of the match, and he was able to regain neutral, and that was really able to solidify the end for uh, the other K roll. Yeah. 
Well, um, great job to the Valpo Smash team taking game one. Um, we'll be right back in a couple minutes with game two. Boy, oh boy. Are you happy to see a Kazuya on screen? Um, Entertainment-wise, yes. I'm probably the only person entertainment-wise. Um, Competitive-wise, no, because I know how good of a character Kazuya is. Luckily for us, though, Alex should have a lot of experience in this matchup because I tend to hop into Smash practice every once in a while. <laughs> um, so, you know, if I see Smash players playing, I'll... Uh, Every once in a while, I'll get an itch, and uh, I'll pull out my Kazuya, so. I feel like I have a pretty good Kazuya, so, like, I'm on par with, like, um, a lot of the players, as I um, did play in my undergrad. But getting into the actual game, um, Alex on Link doing a great start for Valpo, all the way up to 133%. Got to watch out for this Rage Drive, though, as he does lose it. Rage Drive, if you do the input, which he um, was actually inputting it, it does 40%. Um and can kill extremely earlier. But um, absolute yeah, phenomenal job almost. in neutral. Yeah, 7.5% only on the link. And he's already got the Kazuya at 30%, so we're going really well right now. Alex is doing a really good job. Ooh. He answers back. Not able to get the electric on the down throw. Does get the 10 hit combo. At that part of stage, you're not able to get that uh, like smash DI window where you can get out of it, so it's actually fully true. Yeah. Um, in this matchup specifically, Alex kind of wants to stay away, utilizes boomerang and arrow, which he's been doing a great job of. Um, ooh. Yep, smash connecting. So this Kazu definitely knows the inputs. Um, so we're down to eight stocks a piece for each team. Able to get it that time. DI just going straight up. Kazuya not able to uh, keep going on that, but does uh, keep his center stage. Kazuya with Rage Drive. Won't kill just yet, but uh, something you would be very careful of as it will go through smash attacks, lit literally anything. <laughs> so, as um, he has a lot of practice against Kazuyas who like to spam Rage Drive and hope for the best because I do that all the time. So, <laughs> at the bomb off stage, uh, gets that sock, and now we're down one stock. He's just barely living that up smash. See if Alex can keep hang on to this sock. See if he can clean this up. 
Yeah, Kazuya does have many kill confirms. Um, up B alone probably won't kill. Electric and up B will kill. Electric back air, forward tilt will kill. Yeah. <laughs> pretty pretty much anything you can throw out will kill. Um, anything over 100. So great job with the nair, boomerang back into the nair again. So we'll see if we get a first tech here. Ooh. Not able to connect super well on these nairs um, after the electric, but does get a good amount of percent in as they're both tied at 60% last stock. Great drive will probably. Oh, almost kills. Great DI. Is over 100. Has the rage, but will not have the rage drive anymore. He's really got to watch out for that forward tilt. At 140, essentially anything will kill. Yeah, it's a any hit game. Ooh. Reflector won't do much other than mess up the neutral. Ooh. Get some with tilt attack. So. Alex not able to clean it up. Um, but uh, good job to the Kazuya from uh, St. Xavier. Able to uh, take it. And St. Xavier is up one stock heading into uh, the next game. So I'm changing the stock counts manually here. Six. There we go. Uh, so yeah, definitely a tough matchup. Um, just had a couple too many times where Kazuya was able to get in, get some combos going, um, and able to kill far earlier than um, Link is able to. Um, but we're getting right back into, oh, not just yet, but it looks like we have Josh or King K. Rule going back in. Um, once again, like I've said, both players will have great matchup experience here as they have a King K. Rule and then we have a Kazia player, not, act not actually on the team, um, but in the program and plays friendlies and stuff. Yeah. Um, so both characters familiar with the matchup. It'll be really important here for Josh to try and clean this up without losing a stock. So, curious to, I'm curious why the Kazuya um, is starting in game two but didn't play in game one because so far he seems like he's had the best performance out of all the players except for maybe the King K. Rule looked really good against our King K. Rule. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, their King K. Rule is probably their best player from what it looked like as he was able to bring Josh, like, back all the way to the um, – Last like, hit game. Yeah, yeah. last hit, last stock. Josh with the Gangplank Galleon song choice. I respect it. So, important to remember, we did see Kazuya use that Reflector um, against Link on that Boomerang one time. It does extremely good against King K. Rule. Um, important to note, just because it does take an input. So, um, knowing that he knows that is good to know going into this match. Um, as King K. Rule is able to use that uh, Reflector to do like 80%. They have to be careful there. So King K. Rule really wants to utilize his projectiles a lot. As there oh, we see it. There you go. I bet he was I would like to take one. a lot of credit. I would <laughs> like to take a lot of credit for that because that has happened to me a ton of times. Um, going to that game, we talked about the reflector uh, potentially being utilized and King K. Rule hitting it back for 80%. That has happened to me a lot of times. Um, and I I'm really glad. the Kazuya's pain. <laughs> Yeah, really glad to see Josh um, able to utilize it there. Clearly learned something from playing Marcasia. Um I'm proud. I'm proud. <laughs> so, um, all tied up at uh, even stocks here as we will change it to 6-6 six, six real quick. Um, important here, as we talked about game one, winning that game one um, of like the game, the first matchup is really important because St. Xavier – now knows that they have to play three socks against King K rule and they'll have that stage counter pick, which um, may matter unless if they decide to put in the King K rule and a ditto, which is what I'm hoping for again. So a lot of hype matchups for me personally. I like seeing Kazuya King K rule. I like seeing King K rule. King K rule I guess K I like rule. just watching King K rule. So this is the perfect game for that. I also like watching King K rule. Yeah. Like the so, small battlefield. Who uh, who do you think they'll put in? Got a couple I can see seconds. the K ruling again. Yeah, I think it's going to be the King K rule. 
I think he wants to run back that uh, little singles match they had there, a little three stock, three stock. No surprise here, <laughs> double K rule again. Right into it. They're keeping their distance here. So what um what did you see specifically from each player that kind of they did well in this uh, first time they played each other? I know the uh, K roll on the other team is definitely really good with their uh, counters. Yeah. Being able to watch out for uh, when Joshua sees the cannon. That was definitely my main observation. I felt like he also did a good job um, with his center stage. So getting caught by the sled trap a lot though. Yeah, Josh is definitely good with his ledge traps. If you're a King K rule in this scenario, um, I mean, because you play this Ditto all the time, what what do you think is the best option there? Uh, try to wait for the can uh, for the blunderbuss to run out, so that you can make an option. The uh, it runs out eventually. Yes, it takes a while, but you could either do that or quickly jump up. So that uh, Josh wouldn't have enough time to come by uh, oh with God. the cannon. What I typically see is characters kind of jump off and use projectile, but then if you know that's coming, you can get punished for it too. We'll see him Ooh, not able to uh, get anything here. Just a reminder, Valpo is the green King K rule. St. Xavier is the blue one. Great job with these ledge traps. Um, I just think King K rule's character really struggles um, against this. Like there's... Feels like there's not much, not many options. Like he clearly knows that, uh, clearly knows about it as he's been using it himself. Um, I was gonna say, we'll see what Josh uh, decides to do here. Oh, it doesn't get into that ledge trap scenario. Goes for the two frame instead. Oh, Josh didn't realize he lost his jump there. Yeah, he was at 168 though, so not the worst time to SD. And he answers right back. Yeah, great uh, back air there. So Josh so far doing a lot better against this King K rule. Good to see. Josh can clean up this last stock. Yeah, it'd be really stock. huge if we could kind of get that two stock lead and be in a real um, comfortable spot going into our last player. Ooh, turns around that time. Great back air. You know, last time I said back air when he used forward air, his forward air really looks like it's a back air. <laughs> Say Xavier able to get that stock though. Um, yeah, I remember uh, when I first learned K Ooh, the down smash cleans it up. There is a lot of celebrating in the uh, <laughs> competitive smash room today. Um, as Valpo is on fall break, so maybe a little extra energy. He didn't have to wake up early and go to class, so. Yeah, true that. And also lots of K-Row actions today. You love seeing heavies yeah. took it out, especially in a heavy ditto. That's exciting. Yeah, there's a lot of hype characters today, so that's true too. Fun yeah. games for sure. So we have seen the Zelda and we have seen the Robin, so I'm going to guess it's one of those two. Out of those two, who do you think fares better in this matchup? I think definitely the Zelda, because of Zelda's reflector. I feel like she has enough time to re-reflect after uh, K. Rule reflects back, and K. Rule would be in a pretty bad scenario there, because K. Rule's uh, counter is really slow. Yeah. Um, we also did see Josh did pretty well against the Zelda. Um, the Zelda had one stock; he had three, and was able to clean it up pretty confidently and comfortably. Um, so I'd be happy to see the Zelda. There is also the slim chance that there is another player that they haven't really revealed yet, as we saw the Kazuya um, just before this King K rule. So that's always another uh, scenario, too. Yeah, I can definitely see that as um, uh, with Zelda's performance, as you mentioned. I feel like they want to throw in someone different this time. Yeah. It was only one stock, though. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I feel like one game is never even a big enough sample size, so one stock is sometimes doesn't tell the full story. 
Um, but Josh did do a good job in that one stock exchange they did have. Yeah, definitely. Looks like we're going to PS2 this time. Ooh. Oh, Incineroar. And it will be an Incineroar. Another hype character. So St. Xavier playing with two new players um, in this game too. Seems like the King K rule is kind of their best player and they have this supporting cast that they feel might be like similarly skill leveled. Um, yeah. Unless if they're just the same people with different characters because that's also an option that we don't really get to see until we go to land. That's true. But yeah, it looks like... Um... If I remember correctly, I know one of our players on our team mains Incineroar, so we've got a little bit of yep. experience here. Yeah, LK plays a lot of Incineroar. I think he's currently in a character crisis, but um, do have some matchup experience. I feel like they, they definitely know King K. Roll better. Um, ooh, doesn't get the spike, but able to get a hit on the two frame and gets the forward air. So, great job by Josh. Um, taking a stock here. Just building that lead. Be really huge if we could get another one, too. Um, leaving this Incineroar with uh, just one stock for our last uh, character. Um, I feel like anyone here today, I'd never see that Cannonball connect um, when he does that. Um, but I feel like anyone in the facility we have here today is probably not going to get three stocked by this Incineroar. Um, so if we're able to take the stock here, it'd be really huge. Oh, and catch them with the up air. I did not expect that option. K rules um, up air, I believe, goes through like Steve's uh, down air. So like, and oh, he must have been going for the uh, for the uh, the spike thing, because it kills King K rule first. Um, but yeah, um, Josh able to three stock the Incineroar, so doing a great job. Uh, we'll update the score here as Valpo takes it 2-0 versus St. Xavier. Um, headed into fall break with a win after our losses. Now I'm feeling good. So we only have one more game in the regular season next Saturday versus Ulma, who will um, be another tough opponent for us. Um, but how do you feel about today? I feel like we did really well. Uh, we definitely fought some tough opponents, not just uh Yeah. Um, other than that, yeah, I think we performed really well. Yeah. Um, well, great job to Valpo, improving a 6-2 and two on the season. And um, I think we'll be back tomorrow with some uh, Rocket League. But I uh, hope everyone enjoys their fall break, and we'll uh, catch you guys next time. This is uh, Henry. This is Ben, also known as Cruel. And we'll see you guys next time.